Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today let's talk about a real nerdy subject that's going to have some math in it. So fair warning, if you're not into getting into the nerdy business of fly lines and you don't want to do any math, this is not the video for you. But what I am talking about is what happens when you want a fly line that doesn't exist. All right. And here's a perfect example. This is the head, the clear intermediate head from a, a velocity, airflow velocity five weight. And this particular line has an intermediate running line, which is pretty useless for uh, river fishing because your running line sinks into the water, snags up on twigs and rugs and moss and everything else. I wanted to put a floating running line on it. Plus, because of the way the taper was made, I wanted to reverse it. I wanted the rear taper to be the front and the front taper to be the rear because the rear taper was very long. I thought, wow, that looks like a spay line. And I set this up to work on a four-weight rod, so I set it up as being a four-weight spay line. So I cut the uh, head off the uh, velocity, clear intermediate velocity, flipped it around, welded on a, uh, a running line, a floating running line, and there I got a line that doesn't exist in, in, the, in the world. Uh, my velocity uh, four weight it clear intermediate with a floating running line. So let's talk about actually doing that. We're going to take an example here and we'll start in looking at my example and oh I should forgot one thing. I'll be talking about scales and this is a type of scale that's used for people to load their own ammunition for shotguns and the like and it's not cheap and I use it to weigh my fly lines so I'm assuming and we'll talk about this. I'm assuming you don't have a scale that's precise enough to measure fly lines accurately. So let's get going. So here's our problem. Like I said, a, we want a line that doesn't exist. And in this case, I want a three weight intermediate fly line with a floating running line. So the head is intermediate, the running line floats. That's what I'm looking for. So the materials I've got at hand is a, a weight forward five weight intermediate line and I have either a three weight floater or I could have an equivalent piece of running line because all we're going to use from a three weight floater is the running line part. We're not going to use anything else. So you could either have a really skinny floating running line or you could have um, uh, a three weight, an old three weight. Uh, mono doesn't work, okay? So I'm not going to get questions. Can you use mono running line? The answer is no, unless you want a loop to loop connection. So if you want a seamless one piece line, you can't do it. I'm also not going to show welding in this video. I've got lots of welding videos. I will put them up in the cards, uh, or I should say it that way. And uh, you'll get a chance to see what these things look like, uh, how to weld them and how to put things together. So we're not covering welding in this video. So that's all we've got to use for materials. And our project is going to be to join that weight forward five weight head to the three weight floating running line and turn it into a, a three weight intermediate streamer line. Now you're going to say to yourself, a five weight's too heavy for a three weight rod, and you're right. I wouldn't normally fish this, but what we're going to do is we're going to shorten that five weight down uh, and to make it fit a three weight rod. So there's the question, how much of that five weight head do we need to turn it into a three weight? and something our three weight rod can cast. So that's what we have to do. That's the first part to determine how much of that head do we have to cut off. Now I can eyeball it to a certain extent. I can say, yeah, maybe a brand about here. But you know, I've done that a few times in the past and gotten lucky, but once I had a brand new shooting head, I screwed up. And because I was doing it by eye or, and, or, and I really wasn't paying attention and I ended up with a, a head that was too short and too light. So um, it pays to, you know, spend a bit of time with a pencil and paper and, and, uh, and do it right in the first place. Like I said, the assumption is we don't have a scale, but we do know either the weight of the head or its weight at 30 feet. So that's often published. A lot of manufacturers' websites have this information. So you go on the website, they'll either give you one or two weights, sometimes both, where they'll tell you the, uh, the weight of the head, the entire head, which is, could be 35, 40 foot long, or they'll tell you the weight at 30 feet. Either way, we can make it work. 
Now, all we're going to do is do a very simple little bit of math. You know, division, no algebra, I promise. Just multiplication, division, summing, sub subtracting, that's it. So if you've got grade 3 math, you're good to go. Now, here's the tricky bit, and this is the reason why we're doing this. These lines have tapers. If this was level line, it would be very simple, but it isn't. There's tapers at the front, tapers at the back. And if you uh, are using the calculation for the weight for the entire head, you have to take into account both the back taper and the front taper. If you're working with 30 feet, you're working with just the front taper. So that's important. I'll say that again. If you're using the entire head of the line, you know the weight of the entire head, you have to do what I'm doing in the next few slides. You're going to have to do that on the entire, uh, uh, both tapers for the entire head. If you're doing it just for 30 feet, you just need to calculate for the front taper only because the rear taper is not in the calculation. It's not in the weight. So here I'm using an example where the fly line I've got, that five weight intermediate fly line has a six foot front taper. And what I've found uh, through doing all this kind of stuff over the years, that if you take two thirds of the length of the taper is equivalent to the weight, the equivalent weight of the belly. So four, four foot of, uh, sorry, six foot front taper is equal to about four foot of the belly, taking two thirds. So what I do there, so to calculate this is what I'm doing is I'm dividing by three, multiplying by two. So I take the front taper, which is six foot, divide by three, which gives me two, divide, multiply by two, gives me four. Pretty simple, right? Two thirds of the front taper. That's all we're doing. And once we have that number, we can then use that number to calculate uh, the length of the head of the line as if it was level. That's the key part, as if it was level. So to determine the equivalent level belly, we're going to take 30 feet, because that's what our, we know for the weight. We're going to subtract six and add four, which gives us 28. So that is the weight of that head with a six foot front taper. That it would be the, that 30 foot section with a six foot front taper is equivalent to 28 feet of level line. So what I've done is I've reduced it to level line. And if you've got to have to work in the back taper, you do exactly the same thing for the back taper as well. So if we were dealing with a 40 foot head and you had a six foot front and a six foot back, you'd be subtracting two from either end and you end up with 36. So for a number. So that's the level line equivalent. That's what we're after, turning it into level line. Okay, now we're after the grains per foot, because once we know the grains per foot, we know how much to cut off. Okay, and that's how we get that calculation. We have to reduce this to grains per foot. So we take the grain weight for the, for the head of the line, for the first 30 feet in this case, and it's 140 grains which is the AFTMA standard for a five weight line. So in this case, we, we know it's an AFTMA accurate line. So it's 140 grains over 30 feet. So I divide that by 28, which gives me five grains per foot. So now I know the grains per foot calculation and you can do this metric too, okay? Uh, if you want to do it grams and meters, it'll work just fine. As long as you're, you know, you, know, you can do this calculation, you have that information, you can do this calculation if you got it in metric. Now here we start to use that information that we've calculated to determine how much of that line, how much of that five weight head is, you know, a three weight line. How, how much do we have to cut off to turn it into a three weight line? So I'm going to assume that we want a three weight head that's 100 grains, which is the AFTMA standard. So just to keep it simple, I'm going to assume we want a 100 grain head. And because it's going to be shorter, it's going to load the rod very quickly. So you might say you want a little heavier head, but because it's shorter, you know, it actually functions like a heavier head, even though it's the same weight for the rod. So we're going to work on, we're going to, our target is a, a hundred grains. So to determine the five weight uh, head length that we're going to have to cut at a hundred grains, we simply divide by five, uh, the, the grains per foot. So we say hundred grains divide by five, we get 20 feet. So that is the length of the head 
in level terms. Don't forget, that's in level line. Now, to get it back to the taper, we add back that two, two feet we cut off, okay? That in our calculations, not, not in reality, but in our calculations, we cut off two feet. We turned it from 30 to 28. Now we're going to put that two feet back, which produces a 22-foot head. So if we measure from the front tip of the fly line back 22 feet and cut it there, we end up with a head that is 100 grains. So that was what we're after. Turn this into a three weight line. So 22, back, 22 feet back from the tip, cut it there, weigh that. If you had a scale, weigh it, it'd be 100 grains. And if you're wondering how accurate this is, I've done this numerous times and I'm found that I'm accurate within one to 2%. And I'm telling you right now, you can't feel, feel 1% or 2% when you're casting. Okay, So if you had 98 or 102, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, but it's going to be pretty close. And when I've done some of these calculations and actually cut, I have been within a grain or two of the actual weight. So it works. I've done it dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So I've produced a head, which is 22 foot long, that's 100 grains, and will cast beautifully on a three weight rod. And the final step is we weld the running line to the head to produce our three weight line. And one of the things you can do too to make things a little bit uh, easier, if you're cutting it off of a, a float or three weight, you're cutting a run, running line off of a float or three weight, you can leave a little bit of the um, uh, back taper in there when you're welding it on. Because the, the three weight back taper is really skinny. It's barely any noticeable difference from the running line. It's just slightly th thicker. So you could you could actually make your uh, head out of the, the rear taper, the, uh, sorry, the, the connection to your head out of the rear taper. It will work just fine. So that's basically it. As I say, we've got the welding videos that show you how to do it, so I'm not getting into the welding today. But you can put, you know, lines like this together. Another example of what you could do is you could take a f make a full line that is essentially a Scandinavian shooting head for a single hand rod. So you could take this and, and you use, say, a six weight line, make it a little heavier, and you've got essentially a shooting head set up for your three weight rod, say with a head that's around 20 feet, something like that. And you've got a heavier rod, a head that you can spay cast easily. You can work around with the tapers to get like the equivalent of a spay taper for a three weight. You can do all these sorts of things. It just means you need a little imagination. You, you look at the taper diagrams that the manufacturers offer. You look at their, their weight numbers, numbers that they offer and go from there. And it's, it's really not hard to do. Once, you, once you've got it, you know, the concept in your head that what you're really doing with this calculation is turning that tapered piece of line into level lines so you can calculate how much to cut off. And that's really what we're after here. So that's all you really have to think about in terms of concept is we're just using these numbers to create what is in effect a chunk of level line so we can easily figure out how much to take off and that's it. So if you want to get into you know building a line that doesn't exist this is the way to do it. Cheers. one.